be a case for short-term pain and long-term gain if Malaysia decides to cancel controversial China-backed infrastructure projects. Or will China's One Belt, One Road initiative in Malaysia prove to be a path less travelled? Uh, we have seen quite a number of countries getting involved in the, this kind of strategic projects of China have actually not done very well because a lot of these uh, projects were done based on debt raised from China to sponsor these projects and eventually the, the country that involved in this project will have to foot the bill and therefore if there are no merits for this and for these projects and or they are not viable based on those projections then we really have to review all these projects before we get into the this kind of that threat trap fund manager scott lim also says malaysia's intention to cancel the belt and road initiative project such as the ecrl could result in lower gdp growth in the short term due to a decline in domestic investments in the country but should malaysia decide not to fully participate in the belt and road initiative he points out that the staggering cost of 55 billion ringgit of ecrl is not viable in the long run and this is because the cost of transporting goods is likely to be high which would not help boost economic activities. And by asking for fair trade and investments with China, Malaysia has taken the lead for an equitable deal in the ASEAN region. Tun Mahathir may be setting the lead in getting people to review these kind of investments and to find out exactly what needs to be done to make the deals free and fair and equitable where there is mutual gain, not only today, but for the long term. Apart from this, even China's private developer, Country Gardens, has come under the spotlight once again after Economic Affairs Minister Azmin Ali revealed that the residential units in Forest City, Johor Bahru, are being offered for free in exchange for investments in China. So certainly we cannot allow that because they pay taxes in China, they do the transaction in China, but it doesn't benefit us, our economy in Malaysia. And they are planning to bring in 700,000 Chinese from mainland China to own this property in Forest City. And that is why a committee has been formed to reassess agreements and deals related to the sale of residential units in Forest City. This is the trouble when we go for individual projects without strong leadership on top and coordination lacking and corruption thriving. Best one-sided deals are possible with corruption. So experts believe that it is important for Malaysia to get its house in order by resetting the rules for investment policies. I'm so confident that if the government continue to do what they're doing now, eventually all these investors will come back because they know that this government knows their stuff. You see, investors are always smart. They'll go to the place where the games, the rules of the games are fair. Overall, Malaysia intends to relaunch itself on a stronger platform to welcome foreign direct investors who will eventually recognize the new government's effort in creating a level playing field.